My wife says the dumb one was Adam. Her reasoning is this. It took a supernatural being to tempt Eve, but all it took was a sinful mortal to make the perfect man fall. Welcome back to the last study on the book of Proverbs. I've got the hosts, and we're going to wrap up the study now. Um, not right now, in the next 30 minutes, of course. Uh, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves again, and tell me what about the book of Proverbs? Which part of it did you like? I am Bethany Anderson, and something about the book of Proverbs that I like would be how every once, while it's random, every once in a while he throws in, like, things about the Lord. Like, he'll talk about, you know, the ant. He'll talk about respecting your parents. He'll talk about friendship, and then he'll throw in something like, oh, yeah, and God, da, da, da. And it's like, oh, he that just, is kind of, it's bringing it back full circle. He's just saving himself. That's all he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Kathy Briton, and my favorite part of Proverbs is actually this one verse, of Proverbs 27, 1, and it says, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. And that's because I feel like people are always like planning ahead and it never works out. And I'm not a planner, so. Ha ha! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Proverbs says, okay. <laughs> my name is Janelle Phillip, and what I like about Proverbs in general is that it's probably one of the easiest books for me to understand. I really can, I really get all of it. Whether I follow it, I'm working on it, but I understand it. Very cool. <laughs> Bethany, if you would pray and read scripture first, please. Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you that we're able to come together and just delve into your word. Dear God, be with us and hope that what we say will inspire somebody else. In your name I do pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I'm reading Proverbs 31, verse 3 and 4. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer. Yep. Okay, women and wine. <laughs> you know, this is how why I believe God sense, has a sense of humor. I got three women, which makes me <laughs> wine, which the whole idea of being fermented is not really cool. <laughs> but, you know, you see this whole thing in popular culture, where you, I think everywhere you go, it's, it's alcohol and women. Mm. I mean, even if it's... Even if it's a razor for a man, mm. they use a woman <laughs> to sell it. It's like, oh, serpent, you had the right idea. Let's use Eve. Hmm. How does that play out in your perspective? I mean, what, how does that really impact? How do these two things impact popular culture today? Well, I, I feel like it's so natural. It's so common. It's normal. At drinking, it, it, if you don't do it, actually, if you don't do it, it's weird. Yeah. That's you know? why they have non-alcoholic drinks. So then if you don't drink, you can still drink. You can because still it look drink. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, common. Everyone does it. You know, <clears throat> in this age when this was written, it was a male-dominated society. And today it's still a male-dominated society. <laughs> and so it kind of makes sense that in the writing of that, it went hand in hand. I mean, you see the ads for beer on TV. There's always a pretty woman somewhere and if he's drinking she's going to turn in the can's going to turn into one or something i mean it's just something <laughs> so it, it, in in the culture today it does go hand in hand based on especially how you know society is with the male dominated okay you're, ta you're telling me that it was a male dominated society back then and all i can think <laughs> of is here's samuel i mean here, here's solomon samuel here's <laughs> solomon in his palace with all the concubines and wives in the whole palace. I mean, he was a minority in that. So was he venting in the process of writing all of this? He could have been. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> he, he might was, have had a lot around. It was a male-dominated palace. 
Well, no, but as far as for what ruled, yeah, <laughs> and for who, I mean, and you think of like the ads and stuff today, and I'm not p pointing or placing right, the no, blame I'm, per I'm se. No, I'm kidding. I'm just saying, you know, but in general, I mean, you know, behind most executive companies and a lot of stuff, it's still a male-driven society. I mean, it's male, you know, heavily um, oriented to men making the decisions, and so it does go hand in hand, but I kind of also get how one leads to the other, and you know, he's, in, in, in these verses, he's talking about don't give your strength to the woman, and in the way that you don't give your strength to the woman, I'm thinking he's talking about the, you know, just woman that he should not be with is by not being intoxicated and not just overindulging and not, you know, going in the direction. So that's what I was getting from those verses. So is he actually talking about, is he actually talking about women or a certain type of women? Like, be careful, is it? All women are bad. Look at me. I got all of them. I can't talk much. Or is he, there's a certain kind of woman, son, don't get messed up with. I'm going to say a certain type of woman because, yeah. you know, right after they talk about the virtuous woman, you know, right. I think a lot of people, if you've heard of Proverbs, at some point you've heard of the virtuous woman. So he goes and talking about the right kind of woman. So this portion of it, it's, I'm thinking that he's saying about the, the kinds that you want to stay away from, the kinds that will maybe lead to a downfall or to another area. So how do you resolve this between what biblical counsel says about <clears throat> women, the mm -hmm. good and the bad, mm -hmm. and what society has to say about women? Because society says, well, there's a certain kind of woman. If you, know, if you can put a ring around her waist, then that's perfect. If it's, it's, if it's <laughs> a size of a bangle, not so much. If you've got to put a belt, wait a second. You know what, and, and I'm over-exaggerating, but mm -hmm. society has this, this ideal that they push out there, and then you've got biblical counsel that says, be careful of a certain kind. And I, when I read it, and it's not a, I'm, I'm not justifying this because I'm the only male on this discussion, <laughs> and I want to get out of here alive. <laughs> 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 I've got a family, please don't kill me. Now, um, it's because when I look, read this, I realize that here was, here's a man, and apparently a, a mother too, mm -hmm. who were advising a son. It's mm -hmm. not like they were advising a, a daughter here. So most of the counsels look, these are the, these are the pitfalls that you have to be careful of. There are good people and there are bad people. Be careful of the bad type of this. Mm -hmm. And I know society, I mean, Christian society has taken this and said, aha, all of them people that are that gender, you know, and there are instances where Christianity has inaccurately done that. But when I look at this and I look at what society has to say, how do you resolve this? How would you, if you were advising your son, what would you say to resolve the difference between biblical principle and what society has to say? Okay, that's way much, too much of my talking, so go ahead and take it. I mean, I, I would just point, I don't have another way of doing this than pointing it back mm -hmm. to scripture. Um, like uh, it, 31, 30 says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Like there's no, you cannot say that, uh, you know, the women you see on TV that are portrayed as like the ones that you should be with necessarily reflect. I mean, they might, but they don't reflect it on TV or on social media. They don't reflect that they fear the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's just pointing. That's that's the only way I, I don't have any children, but I think that that's how I would point them back to. Um, I would point them back to scripture and let mm -hmm. them know that that's how to do that. I don't know. And I mean, I, I don't take any issue with how, you know, this was written to 31 and what she's saying to him. I mean, I would tell I would tell my son the same thing. And I would also tell my daughter, you know, make sure your husband is known among the gates where he sits among the elders of the land. So it's, I don't think it's necessarily saying one versus the other. It's just counsel that happened to be written mm -hmm. from a mother to her son about the type of people. But in there, she also is also telling him how he, how should, he should be, be as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not one-sided, right. one versus the next. It's just saying, be careful of certain types of women. Be careful of drinking these types of drinks, might types of drinks and wine and so forth that might lead you down another path, that might you know, point you to another place. I like verse and then five. It goes into it. <laughs> I love verse five. Here's why you have to be careful of intoxicating mm -hmm. drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all afflicted. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many politicians have discussions about law with alcohol yes. mm -hmm. presence, like, let's, present? Let's, let's discuss this over drinks. And you're like, uh, <laughs> that no. doesn't sound like it's a like, good idea. like, let's sit down. We'll talk about important issues. But first, let's get sloshed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like when they're talking about money and how much money they should get that they ever seem drunk. But <laughs> when they're talking about issues that, are, that affect the land, it's like, 
one round here and we'll wait for the 10th one before we discuss legislation. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying all politicians are drunk. I mean, 99% right. of them are. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm so going to get audited. But, you know, it's, it's important to see that what they're talking about is, look, these are the things that are important. So mm -hmm. if you, when you want to make a good choice, mm -hmm. make a good choice when you're coherent. Yes. And here's the choices you make, especially when it comes to the relationships that you have. Mm -hmm. um, I come back to this whole idea of how we, we make, we look at how things are pushed upon us in society. Mm -hmm. In almost every major sport event, and it isn't just football in America or real football in the rest of the world, <laughs> I can say football. that and live, like you know, uh, <laughs> all the ads are dominated by are dominated by alcohol mm -hmm. and women. And we like to point fingers at that, but bring it closer to home, since we're all Christians here. When you look at Christian women, is there a certain image that we portray and say, well, that's a Christian woman, when necess not necessarily, it could just be a mask that we have, and we raise our young people believing that's the ideal person, and is there any danger in that? I think that 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 might have been true at some point in time. I think over, um, over the, as time goes on, I think that changes a little bit. But I remember, yeah, growing up and, you know, women with long skirts and long hair and, you know, just that uh, don't speak up and don't necessarily like laugh as loud as the rest or whatever. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, they, <laughs> you know, like, so it, they had, they had to be like a certain kind of personality too. But now I think, society realizes that Christ, like Christian women don't necessarily have to be of one make and model. So I think, yeah, it has changed over the years. I think it changed. It depends on where you are. Um, okay, go ahead. I, I went to Peru, and when I was there, where we stayed was a very male-dominated society, and they had a mother's committee in this community. And a mother's committee? A mother's committee, where the mothers can you know, discuss issues with the male leaders, but we had a leadership meeting with the men who um, run this community and the women didn't say anything. They were off to the side and the men kind of took charge of what was gonna happen in this community. And when I asked, well, what about the women? They were, stand they were sitting by the window and they were kind of just quietly listening and taking it in. And I think that that has a lot, that says a lot about where we are still as opposed to where we should be. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you said that because in verse 16 of 31, it says, she considers a field and buys it. Mm -hmm. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. So she's able to still make decisions. You know, what I see in, so it's not as if that she's like, necess it didn't say that she went in, per se asked her husband or so forth, but there was some kind of trust between the two of them that she's able to go ahead and buy this field. So it's not like you're just doing what you're told and just to be there for somebody else. But within this 31, most of what I see about this woman is not even external. Mm -hmm. The most of it is internal. She does him good and not evil. Um, she, she rise, you know, um, it says here, she, she strength and honor are her clothing. It's a lot of things that are internal. It doesn't necessarily talk about all these external things that comes out. So it's a lot of it is about what's inside. And I think as society, as we're growing and we're still stuck in some places, as you said, we're still behind in some places, but I think we're getting back to what I really find is really a very, um, it's such a good point of reference, especially for young women, especially for any, any age, but especially for women growing up, of the kind of woman to aspire to be. That it's not just about if I look like this, if I weigh this, if my hair is this, or so forth, but what do you have, what do you have here? What is your value? What is inside? Let that come out. So it's not about, and I think that's how, that's how Christ sees and deals with us from the inside. He, the outside, we can fix all of that at later. Mm -hmm. And truthfully, when we get to heaven, one of the things I'm so thankful about is I'll have a whole new body. <laughs> I'll be something totally new <laughs> because there's just too much pressure out here to try to just be this image. Mm -hmm. But I know with here, the pressure here is something that I want to deal with, something that I want to have because the pressure there is, is, is actually fulfilling as I start to see the change that Christ makes in me. 
yeah, I want to be the best I can be on the outside because I want to live long, but that's not my priority. It's interesting. You point out to in chapter thir 31, when you look at it, it isn't a how to for everybody to be the perfect person, mm -hmm. but it says if you're looking for a virtuous wife, here's the characteristics you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm looking, I'm reading through this as you were talking, and I'm going, that's what you see here, is the fact that, you know, is not just a subservient person, right. but a woman of strength who says, hey, look, you know, I've got this money and I know where to invest it. And I've got, I've got brains to make that decision mm -hmm. and it's, that investment's gonna be returned and it's gonna support the family. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, you know, it, I love this verse that says, verse 11 says, the heart of her husband safely trusts her. Mm. So you know there's a relationship there. It is not a, I'm the husband, thus saith I do so <laughs> forth or whatever in the mm -hmm. King James, because it's the only language we're supposed to speak. But you know, the whole idea is the, is this a strong relationship where the husband says, hey look, this is it. You're talking about male dominated society. I grew up in India and it was interesting when, as a kid, we'd always say, okay, who really rules the society? Because you see the men talk with such strength and everything else, but if you ever catch them at home, you see the wife is the one that has the key to the safe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and makes the purchases and does all the running around that when she says, mm -hmm. okay, I want my son to marry that girl, the husband goes and makes that contact, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not saying that he is subservient, mm -hmm. but that there's that, that sharing of strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I read this here, this is what I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you read the rest of Proverbs, you do understand that they are saying, not everybody is like this. Yeah. Right. Not yeah. everybody is, I mean, it's not like they had roofies back then, but he'd say, be careful of this, because you don't know, not that I would know anything about it, I read about <laughs> it in the news. You know, there are things that you want to be careful of. Mm -hmm. You know, this, the adulterous woman, for example, be careful when you're going down the street because she's going to come up to you and say, my husband's not in town, so, yeah. and that's the worst thing that can happen. Mm -hmm. How does that come about? How do you see that? The adulterous woman, why is, he, why is he coming back to this woman that's all these things that can trip you up? Because even though this is ideally the type of woman that you want, there is other types of women out there. Like, it's, it's a very real book. It, it's mm -hmm. showing you both sides of the spectrum. But you see Solomon writing this book, mm -hmm. and you're wondering, how are you coming up with, you specifically, you're not saying, well, son, there's good women and there are bad women. There's mm -hmm. good drink and bad drink. He comes back and he hits, be careful of the adulterous woman, because that will bring you down. I think for him, it was, I mean, he had a thousand women, and maybe through the thousand women, he did not find somebody who was what he thought he should have, or what he thought was a virtuous and noble woman. Because I mean, the Bible, t the Bible talks about that, that woman, that certain types, that the woman he married took him off the path mm -hmm. of following God. So he knew firsthand that, that you know, even marrying or joining with someone that's not on the same page or mm -hmm. trying to be on the same page that has completely different beliefs. <laughs> Not that you're just ha having this friend, like he married them or concubined them or whatever. Concubined them. <laughs> we just created another word there. <laughs> just, we'll go be concubined, all. <laughs> he just, you know, got together. They took him away from, from Christ. Mm -hmm. they, they helped to pull him to stray. Right. And so when he's writing this, he's like, yo, watch out for these people. Watch out for this kind of person. And you know, I always say this because, you know, especially in this day, with everything else, it's like everybody can take that mm -hmm. home. Everybody can take that back. Me as a woman, I'm not watching out for an adulterous woman, I'm watching out for an adulterous man. And so within that, I can take that as well and understand that within all of this information, it still applies to me. I can still take it and go with it. And that I can be, I need to be careful as well because anything that's taken me away from Christ, I need to just say, uh-uh, I'm going to keep focused. No, 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 no. Go to go, go, go. This is Sabbath School U. Yeah. This is where we try to do things that are polished and look TV-like. But sometimes <laughs> that don't work. So what I was going for is this conversation we had earlier on about the adulterous woman and Solomon knowing that firsthand. And here is where she's laughing for because she knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, he knows firsthand because he's, I mean, he saw it in his house. I mean, he saw it when he grew up. You know, it's not like he came out, David didn't have one wife. I mean, David went and killed somebody off to get, <laughs> to get a woman. I mean, this is, 
at its core. Who was his mother? Who was his mother? Yes. I mean, at the core, he is witnessing this. It, so within that whole palace, you know, it's kind of like some people feel like, oh, the kids don't know we're fighting. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, they, they do. do. Yeah. And even if they're sleeping, yes, they, they know do. what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so they could have been in this big old palace from here to there. Everybody in the palace knew. The whole, the staff was there talking, Solomon's hearing. So he can see mm -hmm. firsthand what's going on in David's life and then in his own life. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, it's not, he's looking at this and saying, be careful. He's like, warning, <laughs> warning, <laughs> warning. I've seen this. I know this. I'm I telling you, mm -hmm. watch out. Don't do this. And so it's just up to us now to say, what are we going to do? But here's, here's what's interesting. I mean, he, this, here's a man who's supposed to be the wise person of all time in that, in that culture, in, in, in our Christian culture right now. And he says this. But if you flip through Chronicles and Kings, you still have kings that do exactly the opposite of what they have. And all of this is repeated through generations. Mm -hmm. You have Ahab with Jezebel. Mm -hmm. That's a sad story. It I is. I know we're not going to say no, it's a sad is. story. <laughs> it's, it's, it's how does knowing this, and we talked about this earlier on, we talked about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. No, wisdom is the application of knowledge mm -hmm, to form mm -hmm. ways like honing knowledge. How do you take this and you say, for a, the normal Christian, how do you say, here's what society and culture says, even within the Christian society and culture? Because mm -hmm. so much in, Christ, in our Christian church is influenced by more by culture than it is by scripture. Very true. Mm -hmm. So to, more and more we accept things, not because it's biblical, but because our Christian culture is sort of moved in them. We're like, hey, you know what? It's no big deal. So it doesn't really change things. And we're like, but it says in scripture, don't do it. Yeah, it was a different time and place. Hmm. So how do you take what scripture and put it into practice? How do you take the knowledge that we have, the Proverbs that you learn and put it into, how do you help somebody understand that? I think we have to be knowledgeable of that. The fact that, you know, sometimes we get caught up with our, our culture, the things that everybody else are doing. We have to make it a point to apply biblical the biblical standpoint versus what everybody else is doing and that's hard when everybody around you is doing something else it's hard to apply that knowledge um but it's something that you have to say okay if this is something that i struggle with or hey i'm single i'm trying to marry someone this i'm going to apply this to um my search for mm -hmm. my future husband you know and something you have to mentally say hey i'm gonna do this and god help me to keep this even when everybody else is not, and it's not easy. I'm, I, it sounds like it's easy, but it's not. Um, I mean, and it's not because we have so much of that noise that disturbs mm -hmm. our, our thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we have this noise that comes in and says, "Okay, this is what you have to. This is going to be so much better. Um, so much so that you know, we have this thing in the, in the Adventist church where we don't drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. But when you have weddings and everything else, people want to give the impression then that there is this alcoholic drink, whether it's a, at the flute or the champagne <laughs> and everything else. And you're like, wait, how close are we getting to? It, it's, it's so much so that we don't have bacon, but we have stuff that tastes like bacon and looks like bacon that's <laughs> yeah. not healthy for you. But we say, Ooh. hey, you know, it's... Stripples. Yeah. <laughs> now, we're calling people out, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's... It is, it's, it's, it's a tough thing. Um, it's, it's not always very easy to do, but it is possible to do. And that comes from, we have examples nowadays. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny, like, people always say the Bible is old and how does it still apply and so forth. Well, let's look now. Can anybody tell me people who are in a really messed up adulterous relationship that's having the time of their lives? Mm. I mean, it's, this is- Wait, 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 let's back up. <laughs> <laughs> When they're they, having it, they're having the time of their life. But the effects of it long I, outlast. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not condoning the act. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying that sin is pleasurable. And, and right. There's absolute oh, yeah. pleasure. Like you're going to get something from it. And, or else and, we would it's never not do right, it. right and it's not joyful. It's pleasurable. Yes. And I think we do a disservice when we tell our young people that you won't feel pleasure. It won't feel good. Right. It will feel good. <laughs> yep. Not that I've been involved. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I'm just saying it, we do a disservice when we say that. So when somebody gets there and they find it's pleasurable, like, Wait, they lied to me. Mm -hmm. But there's a difference between pleasure and joy. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you find the person that you know who loves the Lord first above you, who has these qualities, you will find joy. And that joy, that pleasure you get, cannot be beat. Mm -hmm. Right? 
I well, fully agree. I mean, it, it, like I say, you know, it's not that it's it's taken away because if sin had no pleasure, we would never do any part of it. Right. There is something that comes out of that that gives us moments or moments of it, but the long time effects. Oftentimes, right. as we see through the Bible, through examples in the Bible, such as Solomon, through other folks, through people we know today, you know, you let somebody live long enough, <laughs> and oftentimes, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they'll come back and they'll say, I wish I should have done this different. I wish I could have done this different. I wish this. And so, yeah, it might have given you something at the moment, but in the long run, how much more joy, peace, Hap not happiness, but love could you have experienced during your life if you would have done things the way that this old book says? This is what's important for me. And I just hit Bill Maher, who I do not condone in any way, and I don't want to be on a show either to, be, to say hate this, but Bill Maher had this one segment where we were talking about how having older people running for office mm -hmm. is a good thing mm -hmm. because they have the experience of life mm -hmm. to govern well. All this talk of having young people governing, they don't ha they have the knowledge, but mm -hmm. not that honing of knowledge to wisdom. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what he said. And I'm going, wow, it's amazing that's there because it is here too in scripture. But what is also here in scripture, and I look at the book of Proverbs, is the fact that here was an older person mentoring a young person, mm -hmm. knowing that full well that one day he's not going to be there to mm -hmm. hold his hand. And I see a that as a calling for all of us to go to a younger person and say, here, here's how, and these are the mistakes we made or these are the things we found, so don't waste time or budget <laughs> to, you know, to, to figure this out. Or even us going to someone older that yeah. has yeah. experience right. more yeah. than we have. Yeah, That's probably the best thing you could do is like sit at somebody's feet and be like, teach me, tell me, you know, let me learn from you so that I don't see what you've done and think that I can get away with it. Or drown my sorrows in, in, in liquor or in uh, or with the wrong kind of woman. Mm -hmm. You know, I learn help me learn so I don't find myself substituting something fake for what should be real. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. We came through this without me. Yeah, I'm still alive. It's a good <laughs> feeling. If you would like to contact us, please visit us at our website at www.sabbathschoolu.org. That's www.sabbathschool, the letter U, dot org. Remember, the goal of Bible study is information and transformation. It's for the head and for the heart. For Sabbath School U, I'm Falbo Fowler.